Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. Yesterday I made a video about the congressional hearing on UFOs and UAPs and it got me thinking about the subject of Bigfoot. It's of my belief that the government knows Bigfoot exists. There were hairs sent in by um, Peter Byrne, a famous Bigfoot researcher from the past. He sent in hair samples to like the FBI. They looked at them. They were inconclusive to the FBI. They didn't say they were Bigfoot, but they know Bigfoot exists. And it's one of those things that is different from the UFO subject in that it, it gets treated differently, I guess. It's a little bit more, people don't take it as seriously. Like you're not gonna see hearings in Congress about Bigfoot or anything like that. And why is that? People are experiencing Sasquatch. People have filmed it. People find tracks of these creatures. But it's like, what is it? What are the reasons to, as to why they won't come out and say Bigfoot exists? There's a few different things. Like people, like one of the main things people say is that it would disrupt the the forestry like industry, logging. They, they would have to set aside land to have as like sanctuary for these things. If that's assuming they're like an animal, if you treat treat it like an animal, like a flesh and blood animal. But I think there's a strong possibility that it's more, you know, human-like. It's not a human like us, but more human-like. It's like a people. Like, along the lines of Neanderthal or something like that. It's not like Neanderthal, but it's kind of, you know what I mean? It's not human, but it's a little bit off. And if that's the case, if Bigfoot is something like that, another upright hominid living amongst us like hiding out in the woods that would rewrite all of history and they could be trying to protect like the all the i guess information they have in place now and like the institutions and like it, it would just rewrite everything it, it would change history as we know it the implications would be insane it would have like religious implications like, what is this thing living alongside us that's not supposed to exist? Why is it here in North America? How did it get here? And you hear these rumors of, like, giant skeletons being dug up across North America, these burial mounds that have apparently been found. You hear stories about them hiding skeletons in the Smithsonian. Like, there's got to be a reason as to why they would keep this stuff secret. We know at one point in time humans existed alongside other hominids and it's not like a, a real stretch to think that one of these survived but it could also be something else it could be directly tied into the ufo subject as well there's a lot of reports of bigfoot being seen and ufos being seen shortly after in the same area like as, as crazy as it sounds like people don't like linking the two mysteries together bigfoot and ufos because they always say the same thing they're like oh you shouldn't try and solve a mystery with another mystery but it's like fact might be stranger than fiction through all my years of looking into the subject of bigfoot i have come to believe that there's probably something more to bigfoot than it just being like a flesh and blood animal or another kind of hominid that evolved alongside man because a lot of the, re the reports don't add up. There's supernatural elements in a lot of them. You know, like people are actually seeing these things disappear in certain cases or they'll find, you know, a trackway that'll abruptly end out of nowhere. Like the thing just vanished into thin air. Plus these sightings of like Bigfoot being seen and like weird orbs being seen. Like if you, if you think about the, the Sierra sounds that Ron Moore had recorded, they recorded a lot of other strange sounds at that area. And through all their times at that camp in the Sierra Nevada mountains, they never actually saw the creatures. But you can hear them. And the recordings of them have been analyzed time and time again. And like the, the vocal range that these things produced is like so far beyond anything that a human can do. The frequencies are so far off what we can do. And I think the frequencies of them in general, like of their existence, are, are so much more than, than humans. Like, 
it is definitely possible that there's beings out there, creatures out there that exist at a frequency beyond our perception. And I feel like there's something to that with Bigfoot. I really do. And of course, when you start talking about things like that, you start to lose your credibility and whatnot. But I don't, it, I don't have that opinion on it. You know, if you're exploring other like areas of the subject that are considered taboo, like the, the supernatural aspect, I think that's just having an open mind to the possibilities. Because look at the state of the world now. We're talking about UFOs in Congress. Yeah, I think the hearings on the UFOs are crap. Like, I think they're just for show. And I explained that in my video I made yesterday. But they're still acknowledging that there are these things out there and we don't know what they are. And they're most likely from other worlds, like piloted by beings from other worlds. Which is pretty crazy to think about and a lot of these things that are being filmed these ufo craft are doing things that sh they shouldn't be able to do and the beings that are seen do things that they shouldn't be able to do they go against all the laws of physics of this reality i think it's possible that there's creatures out there that can do the same thing there's creatures that can emit like infrasound we can't even like there's, there's creatures out there that can do things that we cannot do. Like, pretty amazing things. So, it's possible that there's a being on this Earth that has developed abilities through evolution um, that relate to its, like, frequency at which it exists. Both its, like, physical frequency and, like, its auditory frequency of, like, the sounds it emits. So, I mean, everything in the universe exists at a frequency, at a vibration, like people do. And there's got to be creatures and beings that exist beyond our perception. There has to be. I mean, I'm a believer in the paranormal. I've had a lot of paranormal experiences, had a lot of UFO experiences. There's stuff out there that is really weird that is real. I don't think it's a stretch to think that Bigfoot is one of those things. And it could be directly related to the UFO subject. It really could be. It's either that or it's developed abilities through time that allow it to evade our perception, to slip out of our perception, just based on probably shifting its frequency. The government has studied so many weird things, like mind control, you've all heard of MKUltra, they've done research on like psychedelics, like LSD and all that. Um, remote viewing, they've sunk a lot of money into remote viewing all kinds of weird stuff i'm sure they've looked into time travel you know they've they seized all of nikola tesla's documents and all the work that he did they're into a lot of weird stuff you can as safely assume that they know about bigfoot especially if the rumors are true of them hiding these bodies of giants but i think it would just have very serious implications on everything that we know it would rewrite the history books and are, are people ready for that you know people like john bindernagel really like went on a, went out on a limb saying that these things are real like he was like one of the top academics that are that was into the subject of bigfoot and nobody like he he was treated pretty disrespectfully by his colleagues like it's the same with jeff meldrum like nobody would take them seriously but they are firm believers that these things are real and i sp spent time with john bindernagel in person i went to his house i looked at the track cast he has and he explained, he like went over everything with me. And it's like seeing those track casts up close, it's extremely convincing that these things are out there and hearing the words come out of like an academic's mouth like that. Like that guy believed, like John Bindernagel believed that these things were real and I believe they are too. It's just, what are they? And why won't they admit that they're actually real? There's gotta be reasons. And I think it it's either it's either they're related to the UFO subject or they're some sort of supernatural being. They have capabilities beyond what we can, you know, perceive. I say supernatural, meaning like they're natural, but super. Like they've developed abilities that we can't comprehend. And those, I mean, those abilities could be tied into the alien subject as well and like ultra dimensional beings. It could all be the same, because we know paranormal stuff happens, we just don't know exactly what it is yet. 
think. But I think with time, like once the UFO thing unfolds a bit more, I think we're going to find out about Bigfoot. I really do. Um, you know, there's government offices in every province in every like a region of every province who, you know, focus on protecting fish and wildlife. They spend lots of time in the outdoors. I've had park rangers message me with their own encounters. I've had people who were like service members in the military reach out to me about their own encounters. So it's like people in these branches of government know these things exist because they've experienced them. But why won't they just admit it? Like, like I don't understand. I think once the UFO thing uh, unfolds more, we'll get more answers to all these other mysteries because some part of me thinks there's relation between all of them. And I think we're on the cusp of finding out a lot of weird things. But that's all I wanted to talk about today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Mountain Beast Mysteries.